Welcome, YouTube. What if I told you the fascists are not only taking over, they're winning. The fascists are winning. Did I spell that right? I, I feel like I didn't spell that right. So, wait, there's a C in there. I didn't mean to do that. I know there's a C there. But no, the the fascists are winning. I don't like it either. But as I explained to you, they are using, they, the fascists see their irrelevance on the horizon. They see that young people aren't interested in their so-called values, and they've made a decision. Accept oblivion or take full control. And they've made a decision. The right-wing Republican Party has chosen authoritarianism aka fascism i know they're not the same thing but they are this is a fascist style authoritarianism that they've embraced they've they've decided to go for that instead of you know going the way of the Whigs, or of course the third option reforming that's out of the question the the spice must flow and the Republicans have made their decision. And before you give me that, what about the Democrats? There's a clear difference between the corporatist neoliberal Democrats and the outright, out and proud, theocratic, authoritarian, fascist Republican Party. Scholars who have read books say the same thing <laughs> that's all i got I, all i have is smart people but that doesn't matter i could have a i could have a binder full of smart people that agree with me and the bad actors will be like what well, doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter they read books but no i have more than books um saber cat we're not talking about happy things right now we're talking about fascists i apologize but i have a good news section coming up after the u.s Please repost that link when we're there. But I don't need books. I don't need binders full of smart people. I have the fascists' own words. They are telling us what the plan is. And just as I just as I predicted, just exactly as I explained to you, Banger V1, thank you for the follow. Just as I explained. They are using every procedural law in the book to take power forcefully, shamelessly. So most of this segment is covering what's happening in Tennessee, where two out of three Democrats, of course, the two black people, were literally expelled. Uh, for some technicality, for for some decorum technicality, shameless, and they're they're already fundraising off it. They're fully defending this decision. We can expect this to continue. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be voting. None of that will matter. All the districts will be gerrymandered. All the decisions will be preordained. It will be a true... You think we have a facade of democracy now. It will be a true facade once the right-wing Republican fascists get what they want. I ain't fucking playing. This ain't no fucking joke. This ain't a fucking smirk fest, the serfs. This is real fucking life. So people need to get wise to this shit. They're taking, they're taking power and they're doing it shamelessly and they're doing it right in front of everybody. So what the fuck are you going to do about it? Are you going to let Charlie fucking Kirk tell you what to do? 
You going to let this very bad person run your life? Now, we must also be real. We must be honest with the population. Having an armed citizenry comes with a price. Yeah. And, and that, that, that is part of liberty. Wow. So Driving comes. He's talking about normalizing and accepting school massacres. To the price. 50,000, 50,000, 50,000 people die on the road every year. That's a price. You get rid of driving, you'd have 50,000 less auto fatalities. But we have decided that the benefit of driving, speed, accessibility, mobility, having products, services, is worth the cost of 50,000 people dying. Is it beyond ironic that they have some kind of looping animation of what appears to be a pool of blood behind them? I understand it's supposed to be the flowing ocean, but the, the color, maybe it's the stage lights, it makes it look like there's some kind of loop of a pool of blood behind him. Am I, am I tripping? Dying on the road. Wow. So we need to be very clear that you're not going to get gun deaths to zero. It will not happen. Yeah, it's the sunset. Yeah, okay. Yep, you're right. It still kind of looks like a pool of blood, but yeah, I'm getting too liberal on you. I get you. Happen. Right. You can significantly reduce them through having more fathers in the home. Yes. So guys, guns and cars, same fucking thing, right? Same fucking thing. Guns and cars, right? Your kid has to die. Do you think he'd feel the same way if that should happen to his fucking kids? You know, it, it must be really interesting to be a citizen in Uvalde who, who you know, who, who, who has no problem voting right wingers right back into office. How do those parents, you know, interact with their neighbors? Oh, I love Republicans. I'll re vote Republican till I die. And, yeah, you know, there's just a certain amount of kids that got to die. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I know your kid died in that Uvalde massacre. Oh, that's really sad. I'm so sorry about it. But, you know, it's just the cost of liberty. By having more armed guards in front of schools. Provably, I mean, we how many armed guards need to chicken out and be chicken shit and don't do a goddamn thing before these guys don't, you know, stop using that as their fucking excuse. And by the way, they support politicians that have no inclination on paying for this. I, I guess if, up to them, up it would be if you were to really nail them to the wall and ask for a policy on how we were going to get armed security in every school, they'd probably say, "Oh, well, the teachers need to have to chip in, you know. Teachers it's it's, it's their own safety as well. They should have to pay for the security provided by the school." We, we, we should have an honest and clear reductionist view of gun violence, but we should not have a utopian one. You will never live in a society when you have an armed citizenry and you won't have a single gun death. That is nonsense. It's drivel. Wow. But I, am, I, I, think it's, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth to have a cost of... The children deaths. That's what he's... He doesn't have the fucking balls to say it. But that's what he's saying, is that I think that the, the school massacres that happen in the dozens every year are worth it. I, am, I, I, think it's, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth to have a cost of, unfortunately, some gun deaths every single year so that we can have oh, the Second so Amendment to protect our other God-given rights. That is a prudent deal. It is right. I... Do not believe Charlie Kirk believes any of this. I think he is is saying what he thinks these people want to hear. I don't think he believes any of it. Rational. Nobody talks like this. They live in a complete alternate universe. Sure. So then how do you reduce? Very simple. People say, oh, Charlie, how do you stop school shootings? I don't know. How did we stop shootings at baseball games? We do. Metal detectors and all that shit. Okay, so I go back to it. Sure, okay, let's turn our schools into, into fortresses. Okay. Who's you going to pay for it, Charlie? Is that coming out of your pocket? No, it's going to come out of the teacher's pocket, isn't it? 
Because we have armed guards outside of baseball games. That's why. How do we stop all the shootings at airports? We have armed guards outside of airports. Okay, yeah, let's turn it into a fortress. We have armed guards outside of banks. How do we stop all the shootings at gun shows? Notice there's not a lot of mass shootings at gun shows. There's all these guns. Because everyone's armed. You know, there's not a lot of mass shootings at gun shows, thankfully. Um, but there are curious cases of suicide. Um, so I, I had this queued up for the U.S., but I think this is an appropriate um, this is an appropriate response to what Charlie Kirk is saying. So that's what you know. That's what this fascist thinks. Let's get a response from a teacher and see what a teacher has to say about this. I actually have an update on the Vegas shooting, believe it or not. Um, stick around for that. Great video player, Reddit. Really good video player. Works so well. I don't know why every time something goes left in education that they think the right thing to do is to involve teachers because it's not. Okay, let's be clear that your solution. To so to be fair, uh, Charlie Kirk was talking about armed guards. He wasn't specifically talking about arming teachers. But I'm going to go out on a big limb and assume that he also supports arming teachers. School shootings cannot be to give teachers guns, okay? That's not our job. We are not first responders. We are not the military. And once again, we are not. Yeah, and banger, uh, Republicans seem to really love uh, gun control when it comes to LGBTQ plus people. Oh, now trans people want to get guns. Oh, we got to have a special exemption for that. They're raging hypocrites. And pointing that out doesn't matter because they're shameless. You can't shame the shameless. The only thing you can do is defeat them politically. Not heroes. It is not our job to put our life on the line to save kids. That's not what teaching is. So giving us guns is not the solution. When the plumbing goes out at the doctor's office, the nurse is not a plumber for the day. So I don't know why y'all continue back, to Lenny. ask teachers to bend over backwards to make this education system work. Giving us guns is not the solution. It's not. Because who's to say that I want to shoot a gun? I don't like guns. Who's to say that I want to shoot a gun? Who's to say that I want to be in that toe-to-toe standoff with a gunman? This ain't the Wild Wild West. So I'm telling you right now, giving teachers guns is not the solution. Not because they may kill a kid. Because it does not make sense. Asking teachers to have guns in case a shooter comes in the building is beyond me is beyond me there is no other job in the world where they would ask people to carry guns to protect the workplace let's be clear stop asking teachers to do things that you wouldn't ask nobody else you know i'm sure charlie kirk would laugh and smirk and have some kind of real smart ass comment for this teacher in some cynical attempt to diminish what she's saying um, so that's that's what she thinks. Um, just thought I'd show that. That would be that's a good you know rebuttal to Charlie Kirk's madness. <sighs> Let's keep it going, folks. I'm telling you this. I, I I'm I use this segment to show you examples of what I am talking about because it's it's very easy to just hand wave me away, right? Oh, you're being hyperbolic. Leftists call everything fascism. This shit is real. This shit is real as a motherfucking broken back. By the way, welcome back, Lenny, from South Boston. Pretty sure you said greetings. I don't know if I saw it there. Make sure you check out Lenny's YouTube channel, Accidents Waiting to Happen. Lenny is our number one financial contributor. Thank you so much, Lenny. I use this segment to show you examples of what I'm talking about. Don't You don't want to listen to me. You don't want to listen to the so-called experts. Why don't you listen to the actual people that are, that are doing everything in their power to destroy your life and destroy your country and fucking dissolve democracy like a cartoon shoe in a vat of acid? Roger Rabbit. Yo, Lenny got the pro set up. And he's, he's already getting more views than me, you know, because it's better content. <laughs> he's, he's better. He's more fun to watch. So good for you, Lenny. 
Um, so here is Scott Walker. So this is the new angle. This is the new angle of attack here. Um, they, th this is this is another attack against your democracy. Um, so uh, and this this has been this is being repeated uh, by several prominent right wingers and across the right wing cancer sphere. Uh, but now this is the new attack where they want to raise the voting age. Hey, congratulations, Lenny! You deserve every one of them, bud. Uh, but they want to raise the voting age. Um, now, what are they suggesting? 25, right? Because young people are doing exactly what I'm asking them to do. And not enough of them, but they're, they're becoming more and more aware of it. Thank fucking J Moses. Thank motherfucking Zeus. Okay? Because young people are starting to be get more and more excited about politics and understand how useful that it is. Because they, I mean, come on, man. I mean, how bad does it got to get for for young people to, you know, wake up from being young and, and hot and fucking awesome, you know, because it's so awesome being like 20 and fucking you got the whole world in front of you. You know, how bad is it got to be for, you know, for those people to be like, well, I guess I got to do something. Actually, it takes a lot. The world has to get pretty shitty for young people to give a shit about it, right? You usually don't start giving a shit until you're like 30. Yo, glory to the Ukrainian democracy, no doubt. But here's Scott Walker. Young voters are the issue. I've never uh, uh, show me show me a, a a more a more a more clear example of an attack against a democratic system than that sentence. That motherfucker typed that shit out. Young, younger voters are the issue. Hey, Trump, uh, Mr. Ride With Me, do you want to play a game? You want to play a game, buddy? Um, so, rest of Scott Walker. It comes from years of radical indoctrination on campus, in school, with social media, and throughout culture. We have to counter it, or conservatives will never win battleground states again. So they want to raise the voting age and cancel young people. Hey, pussy ass, ride with me. Hey, puss boy, you want to play a game or are you going to chicken out? Uh, please no death threats in the chat. That's against TOS. I'll have to ban you if you do that one more time. Please no more death threats in the chat. Yes or no? You have one more opportunity to answer yes or no to my question. Do you want to play a game, ride with me? There it is. We got one, folks. We got one, folks. Welcome to the motherfucking game. Welcome to the motherfucking show. It's everyone's favorite game show. Are you a dumbass? Here we go, folks. Welcome. Welcome our first contestant of the day. Our first contestant of the day, ride with me. Now, the rules are simple. We're gonna pick, gonna pick a grade one through five using this dice here, and then you're gonna answer a question. If you get the question right, you get to stay until you annoy me again. Get the question wrong, and you get the ban hammer. Let's see how he does. Here we go. Let's get the let's get the dice roll. There we go. Grade five. Ooh. Grade five. All right. Grade five. Here we go. Now. Where's this music? Oh. <laughs> where's this music coming from? Okay. Now, you have 10 seconds to answer this question. Do not try to look it up on the internet or you will be disqualified, all right? You have 10 seconds to answer this question. I understand there's a delay, so be ready to answer. Here we go. Fifth grade question. <clears throat> uh, no, that one's stupid. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Sorry, the hard it's very hard to read what theory proposes that earth originally had one supercontinent which eventually broke up into seven smaller ones through tectonic plate movement 
I think I even know the answer to this one. All right, you got eight seconds, seven seconds. Trump is an asshole. Where's my answer? See, I, that's what I thought it was. That's what I thought it was. No, I'm, I'm sorry, ride with me. The answer is continental drift. Continental drift. Just to remind you, the, the question, just to remind everybody, the question specifically wasn't about what is Pangea. It was what theory proposes that Earth originally had one supercontinent, and that theory is called continental drift. So there you go. We have another dumbass. Thank you so much. Got a dumbass. And please, uh, please enjoy the game. Please enjoy the ban, I mean. Just find you here. Just find you on my list. There it is. You know what? No, we're going to give him the ban. There we go. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, more fascist news. That was fun. Um, okay. Thank you, uh, Zen, Zen Master, for for. Uh, uh, following my request <laughs> and ceasing with your death threats um so i don't know this I, I i'm this isn't this isn't fascism this isn't authoritarian in authoritarianism this isn't theocratic madness what is this what is this then kansas republicans have successfully overridden the governor veto and now authorize genital inspections of children in order for kids to play sports a very dark and disturbing day. No, it's not fascism, though. Then it technically, uh, uh, it's uh, a, a transphobic bigotry. Okay. Okay. They will. When when fascism completely takes control of America. And it will very soon, especially if the Republicans win the 2024 presidential election. They, it will all be legal. It will all be by the book. Listen to this. This is real. Listen to this. This morning, there was a political earthquake in North Carolina. Not a real earthquake. Political one. A legislator in the state house announced she was switching parties from Democrat to Republican. I want to make sure you understand how dramatic the impact of one switch will be. So apparently she's been a Democrat for like 20 years. Um, this will give the Republicans a supermajority. She did this after her election. Right. Okay. I guess I made a mistake letting you stay, huh? Okay. We're just going to go ahead and there we go. Um, hope you, I hope you find the mental health uh, help that you desperately need. Zen master. Have yourself a good day, buddy. Um, so she was elected by Democrats. She had a whole slate of progressive things that apparently she had on their I know, right? She, you know, she was a big progressive. She got elected by lefties, and then she gets in there, switches her affiliation, gives gives her party, gives the Republican Party the supermajority they need to make the permanent changes they need, the gerrymandering changes that they need um, to keep their permanent majority, as Newt Gingrich put it. Apparently, this was three days ago. Protests at the government center at 5.30 this evening. She's already attacking reproductive choice, and that was something she was that, that we voted her in on. Don't you love it? 
Don't you love it? Just a classic, shameless bait and switch. Uh, well, technically, it's all legal, folks. It's all legal. The only way to stop this is to primary the neoliberal Democrats who refuse to push back on this. You got Joe Biden still talking about bipartisanship. Okay? They're clueless. They, they, they are nostalgic for a status quo that existed in the 90s and early 2000s and in the 80s, of course. But they're nostalgic for this corporatist status quo where one side were the really bad guys and the other side were the, oh, nice alternative. It was this compromise that, that Bill Clinton made that everyone was happy with for a couple decades. They're done with the ruse, and now they want it all. They see their oblivion on the horizon. The Democrats, they got no fucking support. Americans don't support the GOP. Young and old, they find them fucking terrible if they have an opinion. A minority of a minority supports the GOP. The voting populace is a minority of America, okay? There's a small chunk of America that actually votes. Within that chunk is a is is like 30 or 40%. If you're if you're being generous, 40% of those people are right-wingers, are the are the Republicans. Minority of a minority. They see their oblivion on the horizon and they're taking it all. More lunacy. Florida's anti-drag bill is so extreme it would ban the Rocky Horror Picture Show and hair the musical. Florida Republicans admitted as much. I don't have time to get into this one, but if you want to follow up and see what the fuck this is talking about right here, there's the link. You got the um, New Republic post right there. You can go ahead and follow that. I know it's a Reddit thing. Might have to ask candidates to sign a loyalty agreement, right? Hey, welcome back, Line Cut. Hey, don't worry. You're just already on the right path to Z Pootler World Order. Your election's already. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it really is a paper tiger, this this China Russia alliance, honestly. And I'm not trying to be, you know, Mr. Privileged Westerner. Um, but honestly, after you know, I just like I said before earlier in a couple or a couple shows back, uh, a couple segments back, I mean, um, China would be much more of a fight than Russia, but even then, I, I don't think any, I don't think any country can really stand up militarily to the United States. And I'm not trying to be arrogant about that shit. I think that's just a fucking reality. Um, and we got to work with that reality. That doesn't mean we got to give America a pass on throwing its weight around and sticking guns in people's faces. The exact opposite is true, but that's just the reality of the situation. I think China is well more aware of that than than Russia is. So, yeah, if you haven't heard the news, um, Tennessee Republicans have, you know, used a, a, a decorum technicality to kick out two black Democrats who participated in a gun legislation protest. Um, and they and they and and they had and, 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 and out of the three, there was two black people and a, and a, and a white woman, two black men and a white woman. And uh, they let the white woman stay. Even she calls it racism. And by the way, where the fuck is the rest of the Democratic Party? Are, is, is, the, is the entire Democratic Party in Tennessee three people? Because if it isn't three motherfuckers, where the fuck are they? Where the fuck is the solidarity with these from these corporatist fucking neoliberals letting fascism fester and they say fucking nothing? They need to be replaced immediately. They're a danger to our democracy, these neoliberal Democrats. Crickets. Crickets. Where the fuck are they? The rest of the Democratic Party in Tennessee. We, we called for you all to ban assault weapons, and you respond with an assault on democracy. For years, one of your colleagues who was an admitted child molester sat in this chamber, no expulsion. One member sits in this chamber, 
who was found guilty of domestic violence, no expulsion. We had a member P in another member's chair in this chamber, no expulsion. Since you're trying to put us on trial, I'll say what you're really putting on trial is we call. These motherfuckers pissing on each other's chairs. Yeah, okay, equal Dari. Focus on what's important here. Pee on another member's chair? Excuse me? So here are the um Here are the Zoomers coming in, Zoomers and Millennials. I hope there's a couple Millennials in there. Millennials. So this was great, but they left. And that's what I that's what I that's what I need to keep telling the lefties um who 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 show up for these protests okay yeah you you got to sit down you got to not leave and yeah they're going to tear gas you they're going to beat you you got to be an incredible nuisance for these protests to really really have the impact and i know it's so easy for me to say that i'm very privileged sitting over here in canada right i moved my family out of this madness I think there's a big fight with the fascism up ahead. And I said, I, I'm not, you know, I'm going to take this opportunity to get my family out of this, do everything I can to fight from here. But there's a lot of people listening to me that don't have that option. They're in America. They're living in America. They're not leaving. Look, America, uh, Canada has its own conservative issue, but no, nowhere near this. You know, the, it was interesting, the convoy emulating January 6th, right, and even flirting with the concept of, um, you know, oh, we, should, we should shut down Parliament. You know, some of the leaders of these convoy protests talking about that openly, and that shit was shut the fuck down. Hey, have a fun one, Chad Mary. Good luck with your stream. Make sure you follow Chad Mary on Twitch. Um, but look, we, we can't leave. That's the trick. We got, we have to become disruptive. You go some older folks there. Not enough. There you go. Attention, but America is gonna go. That guy is a these. This woman should be criticizing her own party. She'd be she should be using this opportunity to shit on her colleagues that are not supporting her, and, and and as well as well as all the other criticisms that she's making. But I feel like she's protecting the neoliberal corporatists. Rock star, because you were a rock star, and I'm so sorry you were asked those racist questions. Corporatist neoliberals out. Yeah, okay. The National Rifle Association and all of these gun lobbyists continue to be able to have control over our legislation. What's going through my mind right now is we need to fight for democracy in the state of Tennessee, and we need people not only just to vote. Uh, the, the reason was that they, by participating in this, you know, uh, there, there was a protest after, you know, because there was another mass shooting in Tennessee. There was a protest about the, you know, there was just a, a there was no, I think there was a, you know, some kind of, you know, gun, gun restriction bill that was attempted to be introduced. And it was all disregarded, thrown in the trash, you know, because there's a Republican majority. Um, and there was a, there was a protest. Um, these, the, these three individuals, uh, you know, I guess were the ringleaders of the protest. 
and they technically broke decorum uh, which you know is and it's it's just a technicality really that got them that got them kicked out it hasn't happened since the civil war or something um but you know it's it's a rule on the books it's all legal it's all legal but people to show up and speak out so that we can end the gun violence epidemic that's happening in our state this is wrong this is unjust and this is not the way that it has to be there is a better way for us to live and we don't have to live this way but the republican party of the state of tennessee want to keep things the same if you want to fight to change it if you want to help to make this place a better place you have to use your voice you have to use your power and yes sometimes you've got to get expelled sir sends you back are you I'm coming back because this institution has to change. The injustices that are happening here must change. And I'll continue to fight, and my family will continue to fight to make it the place that it ought to be and not the place that it is now. To everybody in Memphis and Millington and District 86, I love you. I thank you, and thank you for believing that changing and fighting to change the status quo is the right thing to do. We knew we were going to keep our principles and our values. We knew that we were going to have our ancestors with us. We knew that we were not going to yield to injustice. And we will not yield because there's too much at stake. We see gun violence every single day. We have too many loved ones that we're putting in the ground. And these folks up here treat things like it's business as usual. Right. It is not business as usual. Right. Our lives are at stake. And we're going to fight for our lives just like they're fighting for the NRA. Okay. This is called a winning at this is called the winning attitude right here. Okay. This is how you win. All right. You back this up with action and then you you take it. Okay? They're not going to give it to you. They're not going to give you a fucking inch. You need to take it. And this is the attitude that you need to have when you're taking power back. When you're taking power back. Sir, you do this again. If you keep standing up there at the well with the bull and do that same thing again if need be. Yes, we will never shirk back civil disobedience civil disobedience is what built this country resisting the status quo built the united states of america into the institution that it is and it's my ancestors resistance that got me here and so i will not forget them or forget the struggles of people especially children who march children who are beaten by dogs children who are beaten if i gotta get expelled i'll take that why do you think that you and justin jones were expelled but gloria johnson was not expelled you cannot ignore the dynamic of what happened today two young black lawmakers get expelled and the one white woman does not that's a statement in and of itself that's it that's how you win that's how you fucking win period lock it up zip it up that's it bottle that shit that's how you win and, you're, and, and, and to the haters right now, it's like, well, he ain't winning. He got kicked out. It's about getting back up. It ain't about getting knocked down. It's about getting back up. That's how you win. So fuck the haters. That's the attitude that we, that we need to demand from our representatives. This is the attitude that we... That, when when we, when the left is criticizing AOC, this is what we're criticizing her on. You're not there to make friends. You're not there to go to the motherfucking uh, you know uh, fashion show. We want you to be a fighter for progressive values and to be a thorn in the status quo side. Not a mild annoyance that's easily hand waved away, AOC. These folks may not have paid attention. Okay, we already seen this one. Yep, we already saw that. We got more clips. I got clips for days on this. Um, this fella here, I've seen him before on MSNBC. Eli Mistal. Tennessee for real just expelled the two black guys, but not the white woman. Man, folks, man, they just went out there and straight up did the racism. And I, I, I agree. I mean, normally I push back on this, like, you know, race baiting stuff. This is blatant racism. <clears throat> it is rare, rare that you see racism so surprising that it even catches black folks off guard. 
but literally nothing, but literally nobody I talked to, even as recently as a few hours ago, thought Tennessee would have the unmitigated gall to expel the two black guys and not the white woman, right? I mean, because it's terrible optics. You expel the white woman as well if you're going to do it. And by the way, white media, stop asking why do you think. I totally agree with this as well. You know, you know damn well. Stop putting the responsibility on someone else to say it. You all know what you just saw. Oops, wrong button. It's the mask is off. The, they've always been shameless. And we're going to see more of this as the 2024 election ramps up. It's do or die for these fascists. I need to keep drilling that into, into everyone's head that these people are doing this because they see their oblivion on the horizon. They see, they see the demographics. They do their own polling. They're as popular as diarrhea. The world is watching Tennessee. Because what is happening here today is a farce of democracy. One of the two black Democrats now banned from returning to this very chamber. R racist back? How is anything what, what I've said being racist back? What are you talking about, Kim? Started out as a call for gun control has now become a row about race and the abuse of power. Why? Because Republicans felt this protest calling out white people that are being racist does not is not racism. Just a week ago broke the rules. So this, this is the protest. Justin Jones used a megaphone to call for gun laws to be tightened. His Democrat colleagues, Justin. All right, Cam Goblin. Fuck. I kind of agree with that statement then. Because, yeah, I don't think that white media. What, what the fuck does that mean? I, I, I begrudgingly agree with your point. Pearson and Gloria Johnson by his side. The trio now. Yeah, line cut. It's 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 a joke. It's a joke, and and the GOP are doing everything in their power uh, to make sure that it's it will never change. Own as the Tennessee Three. The call for action followed the Covenant school shooting in the state capital Nashville just days earlier. What Six one? people were killed, including oh, yeah. three children. Oh yeah, that one. Oh yeah. School children were amongst the thousands that came to support the three Democrats at Tennessee's House of Representatives, not for a debate about gun control this time, but a vote on punishing the rule breakers. I begrudgingly agree, Ken. One Republican after another attacked the three Democrats. We all saw the video of what he did. He and two other representatives effectively conducted a mutiny on March the 30th of 2020. And they're and they're calling it an insurrection, of course, because they need to. They need to call all of these things insurrections. We need to water down that term. We need to reduce its effectiveness. Do everything in their power to diminish what what an insurrection means. Twenty three in this very chamber. What he was essentially saying was that Justin is an uppity Negro. How dare he point at the speaker? and call a lie a lie how dare he treat act like he's your equal how dare he come before this body and not bow down that's why you're standing there because of that temper tantrum that day for that yearning to have attention that's what you wanted but you're getting it now how many of you would want to be spoken to that way the reason that i believe uh, the sponsor of this legislation, of this resolution, spoke that way is because he's comfortable doing it. Because there's a decorum that allows it. There's a decorum that allows you to belittle people. We didn't belittle nobody. 
We are voting on House Resolution But the Republican-controlled chamber voted overwhelmingly to expel Justin Jones and then Justin Pearson. I-69, 26 nays. But when it came to a white woman, Gloria... And look at, and look at that face. I mean, that says it all right there. He don't give a shit about democracy. They don't fucking care. This is, it's all, it's all a technicality. Okay. They got a goal and they're achieving it. They're winning. They're winning. The neoliberals aren't standing up against this. Little, little, little twitches, little twitches, little coughs and spurts, but not a centralized fight that when the Democrats had a supermajority, they debated something called the voting rights act. That would have eliminated a lot of this nonsense. Didn't get off the ground. Uh, bipartisanship. Uh, Joe Biden. Or Joe Manchin. Oh, Joe Manchin. I don't know. Parliamentarian. When, when, we, when the final nail is in democracy's coffin, it will be the neoliberals who drive it through. But when it came to a white woman, Gloria Johnson, they allowed her to stay. We called for you all to ban assault weapons and you respond with an assault on democracy. And the personal nature of the assault on her two colleagues left Gloria Johnson in tears. And I'm so Where the hell's the rest of the party? You were asked those racist questions. It's gotta stop. Justin, Justin, Gloria. Oh, Lenny. Justin, Justin, Gloria. And for those who came to support tighter gun control, there was anger and frustration. We demand action. We are tired of being scared. Little kids should not be scared when they're in school. And that is why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's Banning the democratically elected representatives. You know, oh, it's awkward. Oh, expressions. Ooh, emotions. Ah, ooh, go, go, go. Get over yourself. You're losing your fucking liberty. And let me tell you, you're not going to understand its value until it's fucking gone from state government is highly unusual. President Biden expressed his concerns, saying it was shocking, undemocratic. Shut the fuck up, Biden. Where the fuck were you? Where the fuck's the voting rights legislation? Doesn't say a fucking thing. Where's the goddamn executive order if you couldn't get that done? Joe Biden, oh, shucks, go golly gee. Here's another thing we're going to campaign on. Oh, the only solution neoliberals offer to this is vote more neoliberal. Vote more blue. Unquestionably. How many supermajorities have we given these jokers? We gave them a supermajority in Obama era. We gave them a supermajority for Biden. I'm sure Clinton had a supermajority too. He was fucking so popular. I'm not sure though. But I mean, we give these fucking people super majorities. We, we vote them in. We do exactly what they say. We shame everybody that says, oh, I'm not going to vote for a neoliberal. Oh, I will, I'm just going to sit this one out. I don't want to vote Republican. I don't, maybe I'll vote for the, you know, the Green Party candidate. And then we shame those people. Oh, you want to support, you want to support Republicans then? We got we to gotta unify and we got to put all our effort and power and energy behind the neoliberal Democrats. Because they're the only ones that want to actually implement solutions. And then they don't. They just fucking don't. They sit on their power like fucking, you know, um, like a bunch of assholes. Thick <laughs> and without precedent. In the last hour, the vice president, Kamala Harris, has announced she'll travel to Nashville later today to speak to the two expelled Democrats. They don't realize where they started. Despite being thrown out, they say they'll be back at the House of Representatives on Monday. They won't be alone. Thousands from Tennessee and beyond are expected to join them. This is how you do it. You got to be disruptive. You got to be disruptive. You got to be there every day. Okay? You got to do it. And if you can't make it, donate. And if you can't donate, donate your time. We're just beginning, Tennessee GOP boasts in fundraiser after expelling Democrats. The Tennessee Republican Party waited less than 24 hours to start fundraising off the expulsion of two 
progressive lawmakers from the state house openly bragging Friday about what critics have called a blatantly anti-democratic move that shows the party's growing authoritarianism. In a Friday fundraising email, the Tennessee GOP said their adolescence and immature behavior brought dishonor to the Tennessee General Assembly as they admitted to knowingly breaking the rules. And as, you know, as the representative, one of the representatives who was kicked out pointed out that having a full-blown pedophile in their party wasn't enough for them, for that person to get expelled. Um, and they, they care so much about decorum that they let one of their own members piss on another member's chair and that person was not expelled. But, uh, yeah, you, you know, you, you, you know, you'd be a little uppity. Can't have that. Quote, actions have consequences, and we applaud House Republicans for having the conviction to protect the rules, the laws, and the prestige of the state of Tennessee. The prestige of the state of Tennessee. Now that's comedy. Quote, our fight is just beginning. The email concludes. Progressive members of Congress have already denounced Tennessee Republicans for engaging in what U.S. Rep. Summer Lee called straight-up fascism in its ugliest, most racist form before the fundraising email emerged. Now the Tennessee GOP is portraying the state's first partisan expulsion since the Civil War era as upholding, quote, the rule of law. It's all going to be legal. And is trying to capitalize on it. There you go. More clips. So I, 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 this was fascinating. So this is off a of Reddit, um, you know, Republicans caught off guard by the left's ferocious backlash. The GOP is an authoritarian extremist political party that is out of the mainstream of American life. This is a Salon article. If you want to read it, here's the link right here. Read that right there if you wish. Um, I didn't, I, I'm not, I don't have time to read the Salon article, but I wanted to read was this amazing comment here uh, that's sourced. Every one of these things is sourced. This is not ass polls. So let me just pull this up and just make this full screen so maybe you can read along here so some of what's been going on in tennessee and just look at the dates here okay tennessee teachers will be restricted from discussing systemic racism with their students or lose state funding new tennessee bill would will allow rapists families and friends to sue if victims have an abortion you rape a woman she aborts your rape baby and you can sue that woman. Tennessee bill will eliminate Tennessee. Tennessee bill would eliminate Tennessee bill would eliminate age requirements for marriages. These, this is the priority. This, this is the priority. Tennessee to make homeless camps on public land. A felony can be applied to protesters as well. Cause of course it can. That's important. Right. Under under the guy under the guise of cleaning up your cities and getting rid of homeless people, let's go ahead and just throw in criminalizing free speech while we're at it. Well, I'm on neither side. I'm on the I'm on democracy side, and it's it's more complicated than Joe Biden and Trump. I don't have time to teach you all that. If you want to stick around, maybe you can learn something. August uh, 25th here, Tennessee abortion ban goes into effect. What you need to know. Tennessee House Speaker considers rejecting federal education money. Tennessee legislator gives trans youth one year to detransition. Detransition or else. An incredibly, you know, traumatizing thing to tell a trans person. Tennessee Rep Cheryl proposes hanging on a tree as execution method just casually suggesting hanging as an execution method new tennessee bill would allow officers to handcuff special education students tennessee senate approves ban on gender marker changes on official docs despite funding uh, loss risk 
So they're instead of complying with a federal order to acknowledge other genders, uh, they'd rather lose funding than do that. Tennessee Child Advocates uh, advocates raise alarm as GOP moves to dissolve Child Advocacy Commission. So a whole commission that was you know formed to you know give suggestions to politicians about how they can make children's lives better. Go ahead and kill that off. I mean, we want they're going to send kids back to work after fucking them. So yeah. uh, child wel welfare, who gives a shit about that, right? Tennessee shuns federal HIV funds. So we're, we're back to the 80s now to denying the reality of HIV. Probably what? Because it's a gay disease. Is that what we're doing now? Bring in, bringing the old classics back. How close to death must a woman be to get an abortion in Tennessee? Uh, Swillix, let me let me just catch let me just catch you up here real quick. Let me show you here real quick. Tennessee bill would eliminate age requirements for marriages. If you're wondering why I'm talking about Republicans fucking children, this is why. This is one of their legislative priorities in Tennessee. How close to death must a woman be to get an abortion in Tennessee? So this, you know, this is the new law implemented by men who have who don't have medical degrees. They are now they're using the Bible to justify putting women who have a dead corpse in their body. And they're saying you have to reach a certain threshold of death before it's justified for you to have a medical procedure to get the dead fetus removed from your body that's what white republicans who don't have medical degrees have decided for the women of tennessee tennessee made gun laws looser focused mainly on attacking gay people before nashville school shooting gop governor bill lee who signed these bills into law would now like to offer his thoughts and prayers Tennessee lawmakers advance bill to let teachers carry firearms without notifying parents. Oh. That's what's going on in Tennessee. Just a little example of, I mean, this is all legal, little things, right? Little bills proposed here and there, little chip, little chip, little notch, little, no, oh, little, there it goes. There it goes. And then eventually, you know, if you chip away at it, you chip away at something long enough, whole thing fucking crumbles. Oh, well, I guess we're done even pretending like we give a shit about democracy. Woo. The, the 2024 presidential election, if won by a Republican, will be this deciding time. You're seeing it. It's happening right in front of you. The end of democracy. You think I'm going to entertain that troll? Please. Oh my God, Republican leadership in Nashville threatened to strip Memphis of funding if they appointed Justin Jones and Justin Pearson to the legislature following their expulsion. This is literally extortion. So I guess there's some parliamentary procedure or something that would allow them to be reappointed to a legislator, legislature. Uh, and they're saying, if you do that, we're going to withhold funding from your entire from Memphis, which I think is the capital of Tennessee, isn't it? You're in the well today because you broke rules. You're wrong. You're in the well today because you broke rules of decorum. Wouldn't you agree? Representative Pearson. Uh, I believe I'm in the well today uh, because you have put forward a resolution that says that it's more important to expel voices of dissent than do the work of justice, which is fighting to end gun violence in the state of Tennessee. I believe that I'm in the well today. It's not just in Tennessee, reflectless. It's not. It's in every this this is this is just a an, an example of what's happening across any state where the Republicans have control, any kind of majority. And of course that will affect the national elections. 
if free and fair elections are not being done properly in these right-wing controlled states, our federal elections will be affected. Do you like the idea of a Republican winning the presidency regardless of uh, the popular vote or any other factors every single election cycle? No matter what happens, no matter how many people vote, Republicans always win. That's what they're setting up here. Because I, uh, with the courage of ancestors and family and loved ones and community, stood up and spoke up for folks like my classmate Larry Thorne, who can speak no That's more right, because of the proliferation of guns in Tennessee. I, I believe that I'm in the well today uh, because you have decided that it is not uh, right to have debate. It is not right to listen to the voices of the minority. I believe I'm in the well today because on the day that we wanted to honor the thousands of people who protested, uh, we were denied that opportunity. I believe that I'm here because you feel in your heart that it is right to persecute someone who has committed no crime, who has only broken follow, what you us. call the House decorum rule, which according to Section 19 of the House Permanent Rules of Order say that at worst the thing that should happen is censure. But instead, you have brought forward a terrible resolution to deprive and disenfranchise thousands of people in Shelby County of a representative who will and can speak and advocate for them. And I believe, uh, Representative Farmer, that that is wrong. Sorry about the volume. I had to crank it way up and then fucking TikTok here. Sorry about that. And yeah, extremely well expressed. He's got the look down. He's got the, he's got the, you know, the pronunciation, not a, you know, just not a single, uh, I mean, just nails it, nails it, man. How quickly can I vote for that kid for president? He looks like he's no older than 20, 26. Gladly vote for him. Speaking of, I also gladly vote for Jon Stewart. If he wants to run, I'll take anybody. I'll take anybody. He's 28. I'll vote for him. Um, okay, we already saw this one. Let's, let's, let's get CNN's point of view and let's see how badly they fucked this story up. It's, it's not censor, it's censor. Um, it's, it's censor, not censor. In, 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 in these, in these, uh, par it's a parliamentary thing. It's like, a, it's like a, a demerit. It's like a punishment. Um, the censor, not censor. It's weird. Look it up. Yeah, censure. Look it up. It's it's a parliamentary thing. Moments ago, Vice President Kamala Harris arrived in Nashville, where she. Oh, uh, why does Jake Tapper talk? He is meeting with state legislators and gun reform advocates amid the fallout from Tennessee state Republicans' decision to expel two elected Democrats, Justin J. Pearson and Justin Jones, from the legislature. Jones. And Pearson broke House decorum rules to participate in gun reform protests sure. on the yeah. legislative floor in response you, to the deadly Nashville school shooting. This is only the third time that state lawmakers have been expelled from the Tennessee legislature since the Civil War. Uh, with us now, Republican Tennessee state lawmaker Brian Ritchie. Uh, uh, Representative Ritchie, thanks for joining us. So, you so this soft-spoken, looks like a nice guy, can't wait to take your rights away. Can't wait to force you to, to have a certain religion. And he, I'm not a fascist. I'm not a fascist. I just believe in installing an autocratic, authoritarian, theocratic nightmare that everyone has to follow my dogmas. And if I'm uncomfortable about something, then I get to pass a law that bans it. What's unreasonable about, about that? Why can't I enrich myself after, for enabling a group of people that believe that? It's, the, it's, it's, you're not being toler, you're not being very tolerant of my authoritarian desires. You were one of seven Republicans who voted against expelling Democrat Gloria Johnson and one of just three Republicans who voted against expelling Representative Justin Pearson. Okay, I take it back a little bit, but he did, he did vote to expel one of them. So I don't take it all back. I don't take it. He, he still voted to expel one of them. <laughs> Leave it to CNN to find the, the you know, the Republican that's uh, well, only a little bit of fascism. 
but you did vote to expel right, buddy. Representative Justin Jones. It was fun while Can you lasted explain over there your votes to us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I started sharing with uh, leadership and everybody that I did not think that expulsion was the right thing. What these three individuals did was uh, completely horrible. It was a disrespect to our General Assembly, those members that have served before Shut me. Shut the fuck and up. And that will serve in the future. Completely horrible. They're, they're, they're what? Two-minute protest worse than a school shooting? You fucking charlatan. Um, according to Article 2, Section oh, 12, oh, cry, I cried all it day. them being expelled. Absolutely. In my opinion, was it warranted? And I did not believe so. Representative Jones's office is right next door to mine. I had multiple conversations with him this week, letting him know that I wasn't in favor. And essentially, he told me that he wanted to be kicked out because his uh, following was growing. He's Shut the fuck work. up. What a fucking liar. Holy shit, dude. Where the fuck is your hood, man? Fuck you. And here he is disparaging him. No, oh, he just wanted to get famous. He wanted to get kicked out. Wow. They are shameless. Wanted to be kicked out because his uh, following was growing. He's getting all this national exposure. And that Tapper the Jake, Metro where City are Council you? had already. Where the fuck is the pushback from Tapper fucking Jake on that one? Uh, said that they were going to reappoint him. Um, back to the General Assembly. So I was honoring his wishes and voting for him, um, but I didn't think that any of them should end up getting kicked out, um, even though it was warranted um, based on the letter of the law. So Republicans voted to expel two young black men and not the 60-year-old white woman, Representative Gloria Johnson, who did the same thing. Uh, Johnson says that that's because she's white. Um, what do you think of that? This and, ought to be fucking gold. Do, how do you think this looks to the rest of the country? This ought to be gold. Yeah, that's political nonsense. Um, if anything, it was two energetic, youthful males that were a little bit more animated while they were up there. And Miss Gloria Johnson, Representative Johnson, stood there. She, when the they played the video, it clearly showed her standing there not doing as much. And I think that swayed other members to not vote for her and that's why she's still there. Had nothing to do with the color of their skin. I respect uh, all three of them and their constituents that voted for them. I felt that they should stay. And Tacker, um, Tapper Jakes is going to let him blow it had off. nothing to do with race. Anybody that's stating that um, is just trying to talk uh, political nonsense that should not be uh, uh, discussed. Yeah. So I guess one of the other... Uh, let's, let's entertain this fascist some more. Please. More of this. Reasons... Uh, that this has gotten so much attention is just because the punishment seems so much okay. harsher than the than the offense. Um, and as you know, uh, last year, the, the former State House Speaker, Republican Representative Glenn Casado, he was indicted and arrested on federal bribery charges. Um, he's contesting that, but he wasn't expelled for that. In, in 2018, Republican state lawmaker David Byrd, as we covered on our show at the time, he was accused of sexually assaulting three teenage girls years before when they were on his high school basketball team he was not expelled um if Repro you see that's all fake news none of that's real that's all liberal media making that shit up so uh we get a pass republicans are so concerned about decorum and conduct why would burn and bird and casada be allowed to keep their seats as long as they wanted uh while these two gentlemen were ejected uh, and expelled Watch this man spew some of the most vile, bullshit, complete nonsense, right? And watch Jake Tapper swallow it like a, like a hungry baby bird. Not a single bit of pushback will come from Tapper. I, I, I was not. I'm a freshman lawmaker. I just got elected. I can't speak on what happened uh, last year or 2018. Um, Master Meatball, you must have got here late. I reported that they, uh, yeah, there's some kind of in in Memphis. There was talks about them returning to the legislature, uh, legislature of some sort. Um, the Republicans have already threatened Memphis with removal of funds you know, assistance or whatever they need, you know, for their, for their, whatever they're doing. They've already threatened to remove funding from Memphis if they were to go through with that. 
Um, I know that the conversation that was taking place amongst the uh, Republican Party this week is this is the first time that this has happened in any of our lifetime as far as for somebody just blatantly uh, coming out and uh, disrupting our floor session and that a precedent had to be set. And that's what the Republican Party was sharing um, as they were going around and, and chatting amongst everybody, each other. But not once did it end up coming up as far as... Uh, they're not hard questions. They're questions that he was fully prepared to answer with this bullshit. And yeah, I mean, it would be one thing to set him up with these, with these, with these fucking underhanded uh, softballs, and then push back on the nonsense that Tapper Jake should be expecting from him. But no, it's just lob up a softball, lob up a softball, let him let him crack it as hard as he wants, and then on to the next question anything that had happened in the past it was based on this right here and this had not happened it's one of the gop in any of our lifetime uh silver age this fella voted yes on one of on one of the black men and no on the other two so cnn you know really likes a moderate i mean we needed to set a precedent i didn't agree with it that's why i was against the expulsion yeah um but according to article 2 section 12 it, it's there in black and white so i mean i totally legal the fascists love it when it's totally legal. Technically, I can take your rights away. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not sorry. <laughs> I guess uh, the issue, uh, another reason that this is getting such attention, I think, is because of the really offensive thing that happened, which is that disturbed individual going into the Covenant School in Nashville and slaughtering six innocent people, including three nine-year-olds uh at the covenant school i mean you can almost see him preparing his his talking points as as he's hearing this he's full he's fully ready to obfuscate and dance around every everything brought to him and like i said that wouldn't be too bad if there was some pushback nashville horrible offensive um you know just just a, a horrific mass shooting and eh. it eh. seems like to, to a lot of people outside the legislature. Yes, that's so bad. That lawmakers, Republican lawmakers are more- The right-wing fascist Republicans who are doing everything in their power to destroy democracy. Okay, don't give me that what about the neoliberals? Because yes, the neoliberals are corporatists, but they're not fascistic. More concerned about a disruption on the floor than they are about these six innocent people killed at this Christian school. That, that's complete nonsense. Um, that, uh, that's the narrative that the media is wanting to share, and that's what these three individuals uh, are wanting to share. There's not one member of that body, Republican or Democrat, that was not devastated by this horrific, horrendous um, action. What does being devastated do for future shootings? And that this uh, lady took um, down there in Nashville when she went in there and murdered these uh, six innocent uh, sweet lives. Um, when it comes to the legislative pro as i've said probably six times already reflect this i know you're you must have gotten here after i said it the progressives need to do everything in their power to primary neoliberals and replace them with actual leftists because the neoliberal corporatists are doing nothing to push back against the right wing fascists i hope that's clear process these same three individuals that are up there advocating and saying i'm for gun or we need to end gun violence and we need to protect our kids were also the same three individuals that voted against school safety procedure bills yesterday and just in february there was a bill that um <sighs> chairman Faison introduced so tired would allow more security and co-ops with private schools. Come on, Tapper, you got to push back on this one. Come on. And out of the seven individuals that voted no, three of them were up for expulsion yesterday. So it's very hypocritical when they want to get up there and say, we need to stop gun violence and we need to protect our kids. Yet they don't vote on legislation that would actually end up doing that. And when it comes to the legislative process, we had bill filing deadline that was back in January mm -hmm. and they didn't submit any bills that would end up moving through the process. And then to state that bills that are being voted on now is just in reaction to that horrible event. Is um, nothing maybe close good, to you going to jump in here? Tapper? Those bills were filed back in January. They come on, man. Come on. October, November, and December. So 
Um, that my heart goes out to the families and the community. Oh, his heart goes and this out. is something that should never end up happening. But it's something that every member up there in the General Assembly is working towards. And yeah. anybody trying to make Come a political on. statement that that's not what's happening is so far from the truth. It's uh, absurd. I'm out of time, but I just want to get a yes or no on 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 this. In, in the wake of the the Parkland school shooting in 2018, uh, a lot of states passed red flag laws. Uh, that's been encouraged in the in the national federal legislation. Uh, after the Uvalde shooting. Um, but now your governor, Bill Lee, uh, a Republican, suggests he might be open to a new red flag law. Uh, yes or no, is that something you'd be willing to think about? Uh, can, can you repeat that last part? Would you, I, be, I would, you be part. would you be willing to support, a, would you at least be willing to consider a red flag law for Tennessee to keep guns out of the hands of individuals yeah. that have been flagged uh, if, if, governor, if Governor Lee brings it to the legislature? I'm not in favor. The, the the term red flag law is so broad and covers so many things. Um, I think that gun law abiding red flag laws work. Do it? Does it even need to be said? Does it even need to be pointed out? It 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 works to somewhat mitigate potential gun violence. Red flag laws help law enforcement find people who are going to be potentially doing something dangerous. There's plenty of stats, plenty of numbers that show red flag laws bring down gun violence a certain percentage. It doesn't fix everything. And this guy has the fucking gall to say, oh, these three individuals, they voted against gun safety. Oh, okay. Do you, do you support this common sense? I got to give it to Tapper on this one. It's a good one because he, you know, he calls out, he, without pushing back, he calls out his hypocrisy in a way. Right, because he just, he just, you know, he, you know, this asshole just criticized. Oh, well, they didn't even want to implement any gun safety re le things that wouldn't have helped anything. More armed guards, and it's, it's. I guess it's nice to see Republicans actually do offer up some funding for armed guards, as useless as they fucking are. <sighs> so there you go. That's the moderate in the conversation. Um, it's, it, it, the absurdity is actually really difficult to keep up with. They, they fill the, uh, conversation and the space with such insanity. It is actually legitimately difficult to fight back and push back against it. It's actually exhausting to push back against how just the nonstop insanity that they offer up. They're non-solutions, they're, they're obfuscations, they're whataboutisms. They are never-ending. Fantastic. Uh, Tennessee, we were talking about how they were backsliding on this law a little earlier, uh, cracking down on drag shows. Now there's some more drama. Uh, Democrats facing expulsion, maybe, uh, because they used a bullhorn for that gun control rant on the House floor. We've been talking about these insurrections in some states like Kentucky and Florida. So remember, we, we need to delegitimize the term insurrection. We need to water it down. We need to be hyperbolic about it. This is a, this is, this is a strategy that propagandists use all the time to, you know, uh, to, to delegitimize um, you know, uh, some subject or whatever. They, they take these terms that, that have power and they, uh, they distill them and water them down. In Tennessee, where Democrats have been shouting about trans rights distill, and sorry. gun control and other issues, uh, it's okay for them to do that. But if Republicans do it on January 6th, they're insurrectionists. So are they insurrectionists then? If we're, if we're comparing the two, do we, do we, do we agree then that what the right wing did was an insurrection? Hello from Romania. What's happening in Tennessee? So I just no wanted to show that. We're not even going to no. We're not going to do it. We're not going to watch Real America's Voice today. I just needed to point this out that this it's never ending and it's very important, right? Any opportunity. So they see oh this is a good opportunity. We can we can disingenuously call this an insurrection. Let's go ahead and get, squeeze that in there. They work very hard. They're very hard workers, okay? They're constantly on the ball looking for opportunities to put chinks in our armor.
if we don't work as hard as they do, pushing back and fighting back, we will lose this democracy. I already had my criticisms about um, Joe Biden's comments. Like I said, we've how, how many times have we given Democrats supermajorities? They had a voting rights bill. Joe Biden let Joe Manchin shit all over it and Kristen Sinema as well. Zero ramifications for Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema for blocking that piece of legislation. Gets to keep his committee seats, no bully pulpit, crickets from Joe Biden. Maybe, maybe even a handshake in the back. Thanks so much for doing the dirty work that I wasn't able to do. I'm voting Chuck E. Cheese in 2024. Please join me. And that could be offered either way to make this not go down. And when I was talking to the Democratic leaders, they said they thought this was already figured out before they entered the floor today. So they really felt at this point that it was it was going to be over. Um, you can hear the the people yelling in the background. Ryan, Ryan, the so this guy's a Democrat. Where are you at, dude? Is this guy a Democrat? Is the, you know, I see a whole lot of Democrats that aren't that are that are hugging and crying. Where the fuck you guys at? Because you know what they should do. You know what the entire Democratic Party should do. The, they should do the exact same thing that these three individuals did. But they should all do it. You're going to kick these three out, you're going to kick us all out. Just go ahead and do what you want to do anyway, you fucking bastards. Here we go. You're bre- we're breaking your fucking precious decorum. There's your excuse like you needed one. There's your pithy fucking excuse as to why you can boot us all out. So you go ahead and you just take out your entire opposition, you free speech warriors. That's what these people need to do, and they don't. 75%, as someone said in the comments section, 75% of this house is Republicans. And these guys, oh, I guess I'll keep my job. Oh, I guess I'll go along to get along. Pathetic. The entire Democratic Party should have started the protest right then and there. And oh, they're hugging. Oh, you, oh, democracy. Oh, you get to stay. This is a fucking joke. Happening on the floor there. Ryan, they want their, voices to, they want their voices to be heard. Okay. Yeah. Protesting so much. Anyway, you want to see the whole clip? It's here. It's here. Have fun. Um, okay, we already we already watched that. We already watched that. Let's see here. Okay, we already watched that. All right, we we read his tweet. Cam Goblin had a good point about that. All right, so I just wanted to show these final two clips about this subject. We can finally move on from this. It's been an hour and a half. Sorry, a lot to cover. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is fucking amazing. I had a couple bags of the winter special Cinnamon Toast Crunch. They did a winter edition. Delicious. Um, Gen Z reinforcements have arrived. Um, You love to see it. We need more of it. This is is what's called a die-in. Kids, you too can can participate in this. Trick is is that you can't leave. When I did die-ins, the cop had to pull me away. I was a corpse. I was dead. You got to pull my ass away. It doesn't do much if you just get up 10 minutes later after taking your video. I'm sorry, kids. I'm going to push back on you. Cloud on social media isn't political change. Yeah, it, it didn't have extra cinnamon. It had some kind of extra flavor or something. Yeah, sugar cookie flavored, maybe. Yeah, maybe that was the one. You can bring a pillow, but they will take it away from you. I heavily encourage you to do so, uh, reflictless. Is that like ridiculous? But I heavily encourage you to do so because that is the only, let me tell you something. It's the only thing that has ever worked throughout history. It is the only thing that has ever worked throughout history to create 
progressive change, political activism. Last one, last one here. I want to see more of it. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of the youth, but it's not going to happen if you just leave peacefully. If you leave peacefully, it's just the co you're just the cost of doing business at that point. You're not, you're not, you know, making that change. You're not putting the fear that they need to feel in, into them. And they should be calling out the neoliberals that didn't join them, not letting the neoliberals that didn't join them participate in photo ops. They should be demanding every Democrat in there do the exact same thing that those three individuals do. And that woman who got to, who got to stay, she should be participating in another one. Just do it, you fascist. That's what they should say. You, Just do it. You, Just kick us all Fuck out. You, Refi. Like refinance? All right, there you go, folks. That's your fascist update. It was a big one. I apologize for that, but it's happening. I'm not going to repeat myself again, but it's fucking happening. The fascists are putting in the work and the left is losing to these people. I'm not being hyperbolic. Charlie Kirk is winning. Do something about it. Thank you.